so this is for week two um for margaret fleming and then for also the octoroon um so i'm kind of answering these questions out of order because that's the way my 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 brain was working with it um so i had to look up what octoroon meant because i had no idea but it means a person who is one eighth african and seven eighths caucasian Represented, which it opened in 18, 1859 as a play. Um, and I found that the dialect, um, the words chosen and used by the characters, you could definitely tell without reading a description of, um, other than the name, but reading a description of what that person looked like, who they were. Um, the, uh, the line between races was very clear. So state as they called it explains to me what kind of what time period we're in without really having to read that also um i feel like it very much represents the 1800s not only because you could tell who's white and who's black but because the blacks were owned and you could tell without me actually saying the n-word that was used very loosely throughout the beginning, or throughout the whole play, actually. Um, the slave auction definitely represented the 1800s to me. Um, Margaret Fleming also represented the later 1800s. Um, there were not slaves. Uh, those, the servant was German. She speaks with, a, with an accent, and you can tell that it's a German accent. But she's treated very much as almost like a friend, like a part of the family. Um, the medical care explained the running of the mill, how the businesses are run, also very much represents the 1890s. Um, kind of what represents the area, the setting of the play, was... Um, while the Octarine was set in the South, you could very much tell. Uh, they mentioned sassafras trees, the Indians, um, and then with Margaret Fleming, which was placed in Massachusetts, you could very much uh, kind of get the, the gist with their accents. -ish. I know you're not hearing the accents by reading it, but by viewing, I guess, the accents. Um... Kind of surprised me, or I don't know, surprise isn't really the right word, but the, how the other woman, um, Maria's sister, was treated because they and, and it wouldn't have been very accepted that we were that they were together anyway, her not being uh, full American, but they were both very much treated as objects. He was going to take care of them and send them somewhere else so that he didn't have to deal with them because he was married. Um, but he was going to pay for everything so that they would go away. Um, the underrepresented populations, I'm assuming, meant uh, how the, the people of different race were treated. Um, the blacks in the Octoroon the gosh, McCloskey, Jacob, um, was very open to hitting Paul in the beginning of the play with no problems, no matter, like, he wasn't even uh, McCloskey's slave. But then when we get to Margaret Fleming, the underrepresented populations, I'm assuming being the, the Germans, the maids, the slaves, or the, the servants, not really slaves, but they were didn't really have a personality. They were not let act like themselves. Um, Maria was the only one who really spoke a whole lot other than yes and no, and she was treated very much like a part of the family. Um, thematic differences between the two plays. So, let's see. Margaret was in love. I feel like both plays represent love and lust um, in two totally different ways. The 
first with the octoroon being that Zoe and George were very much in love, but they couldn't be together. Um, I feel like the representation of love and lust in the octoroon was very much forbidden. Um, Zoe and George were in love, but they couldn't be together because Zoe was black, or she was part black. Um, McCloskey was in love with her, but couldn't have her, and planned very much to try to get her, and that didn't work out either. Um, and then, of course, nobody got her in the end. So, in Margaret Fleming, Margaret was very much in love with Philip, was all over him. I feel like the love that was returned by Philip was not, um, real. I don't feel like that was a feeling. Because if you cheat on somebody, do you really love them? Um, especially if you have a child by that person. So... I feel like that was forbidden in a way that it wasn't natural like he wasn't actually feeling it and at the end of course he's trying to save his own butt but um so I guess that is pretty much it um the best way that I could explain it anyway if anybody has any thoughts as to how I could have better explained that please let me know